it is almost guaranteed that when you interview for Windows Administrator position, you will be tested for your knowledge of Windows 10. In this tutorial, we'll look at the typical questions and answers asked as part of this job interview. Typically, Windows 10 administrators are being asked how to solve typical Windows problems, and this is what we're going to focus on in this video. In case you forget your Windows 10 password, or your system will get compromised, it is very important to have alternative way of accessing Windows 10. To do that, you might consider creating backup administrative account, so you have alternative way of logging in and recovering your information. I recommend creating local recovery account to make sure you can access your system without needing an internet connection. To do that, you would need to navigate to computer management, and here you can navigate to the local us users and groups. Make sure to select users, and here you just right mouse click and select new user and then type new user account. You might consider using names that easy for you to understand, but harder to guess so nobody can guess your account and you always want to use secure passwords here. The name might be backup admin 98 uh, to give it some randomness. Uh, you might also want to uncheck this uh, unless you do want to change the password at next logon and typically select password never expires and then type the password here. And then once uh, everything is set up, you click create button and user account has been created. By default, Windows creates standard accounts, but what you can do now, you can make this account administrative account. To do that, you do right mouse click, click properties, click member off. Account is the member of users group, but we just promoted it to make it member of uh, administrators group. It is always a good idea to create a backup of your drive C when computer is still working and you don't have any issues. This way, you can restore drive C in case of the disaster. To complete the backup of your drive C, you might consider creating system image disk in Windows 10. To do that, you need to navigate to backup you can go directly by typing the backup uh, right in the start menu, or you can also use, uh, call the same option from settings. Here in backup, we go to go backup and restore option from Windows 7, and then choose an option to create system image. Windows is looking for the drives where it will attempt to save the backup, and it should be a separate drive, so this way if something happens to your C drive, you can restore from another drive. In my configuration, I have two drives available. One is drive C, which is a 256 gigabyte, and another one is drive E, which is 512 gigabyte. I'm gonna attempt to save a system image for drive C onto the drive E. And now we can just select this drive and click next. Windows offers you to backup drive C and also Windows system uh, recovery environment. And all you need to do is just click start backup. Once backup is complete, Windows offers you to create a system repair disk. You can use this disk to boot from DVD and then use this backup image to restore your drive C. If you don't have it, it's a good idea to have it and create it when you still can. Or if you have another computer, that's what I rely on, and one computer breaks, you can always create it in another Windows 10 installation. So I'm going to click uh, No here. To restore your computer using system image you created, you need to reboot Windows in recovery mode and make sure your system image is available on one of the connected drives. To restore from the created disk, you need to go to recovery mode and reboot your computer in advanced startup mode. Once you're in advanced startup mode, you click troubleshoot and then you go to um, advanced options and then you go to system image recovery. So you need to know with which uh, user account this image was created. Mine was created with video recording account. You need to uh, type in your password. Windows identifies the image that was created and it offers you to restore from that. By default, when you launch command prompt in Windows, it launches it under standard user account, which provides you limited access to scripting environment. But a lot of times, you may need to run Windows command prompt as administrator. To run command prompt as administrator, you click the start button and type either CMD or you can also type command prompt, the full name of the command. And here, before clicking on this, you do a right mouse click and select run as administrator. Windows prompts you, are you sure this is really one, what you want to do? Because this provides this command window administrative permissions. Uh, and we click yes here. And you see that um, in the upper right corner, it shows administrator colon command prompt. 
right here. And this is a good way to differentiate between regular command prompt, which we're just going to launch to compare. So we type it again. And you see there are two command windows. One is administrator colon command prompt, and another one is just command prompt. Sometimes you may need to launch command prompt in the specific folder in Microsoft Windows. Let's look at how you can do it quickly. A lot of times if you launch command prompt, it launches it right in your user directory. For example, mine is C users video recording. But a lot of times you need to launch it uh, in the specific folder. So you have to navigate. For example, you, you may go get to the root folder and you have to execute multiple commands. Windows provides shortcut and allows you to launch it right in the folder where you want it to be. To do it, you launch File Explorer, navigate to the folder where you'd like to be. So for example, if you want to launch Command Prompt window right inside the temp folder, you navigate to temp folder. Then in the folder bar, you type CMD and it launches it right uh, in the temp folder. And you can start executing command right for the temp folder. To avoid being hacked, it's very important to check and install latest Windows security patches and Windows updates. To check for updates, you type check for updates in the start menu and it launches Windows Update Checker. Once updates are identified, Windows typically installs them automatically and then reboots the computer to finalize the installation. For optional updates, Windows offers you to download optional updates, uh, which makes sense to do to stay current and make sure you're protected against vulnerabilities. I also recommend you check Advanced Update Options by clicking on Advanced Option button and make sure that you configure them by automatically receiving updates for other Microsoft products that you have installed. For example, it's very good for Microsoft Office. In addition to Windows updates, it also downloads all updates related to Office. Here you can also pause updates. If you suspect that update might damage your system, you can choose the date by which you will pause it. You can pause up to uh, 35 days. Microsoft typically provides major and minor updates, and these options allow you to uh, control when installation is completed for those. A lot of times, you need to take a screenshot in Windows 10. Let's look at the different options available, so you can pick one that works best for you. One of the easiest way to take screenshot in Windows 10 is to press print screen button on the keyboard. Windows takes screenshot into the clipboard and then you can access it by pasting it into a different application. For example, if you launch Paint in Windows 10, I already pressed the Print Screen button. You can uh, just paste it and you see the screen print right in the Paint application. Same way you can paste it into Microsoft Word or any other application that can bring in uh, pictures from the clipboard. If you'd like the content, please make sure to click the like button, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Alternative way to take screenshots in Windows 10 is by using Snipping Tool. You launch Snipping Tool by type Snipping. You type Snipping Tool by using a Start button in Windows 10. You launch it. Here you can create new snipe by clicking the New button. And Snipping Tool allows you to select specific area in Windows 10 which you would like to screenshot. The difference between Snipping Tool and the Print Screen button is that Print Screen always takes a full screen and Snipping Tool allows you to make a selection. Once you take screenshot, you can copy it by clicking Edit Copy or using a keyboard shortcut, and you can paste it into a different application. I, I will be using WordPad uh, to paste it. So to launch WordPad, you type WordPad in Windows 10 Start menu. It launches WordPad, and then here you just use Paste button, and it pastes that snipe that we just took using Snipping Tool. One of the new ways to take screenshots in Windows 10, which was recently introduced, is a tool called Snip and Sketch. You can launch it by using keyboard or just launch it in Windows Start menu. To launch it in Windows Start menu, you type the name of it, Snip and Sketch, and it shows up as one of the application. And here you can just use a, a new snip. You select the area, pastes it into the editing uh, application where you can highlight it. From here you can copy it by using the copy button and then you paste it into another application, for example WordPad. Once copied into clipboard it could be pasted into any application that has access to clipboard, which is pretty much any Windows application. Sometimes you may need to take a screenshot and have it saved into the file system. 
Windows provides a shortcut to accomplish this in one step, using Windows key and print screen button. To take screenshot and save it directly into the file system, you click Windows button and uh, holding Windows button push print screen. You see the screen flashes for a second and then you navigate to the folder uh, and you go to pictures and here Windows created screenshot subfolder and here you see your screenshot. If this video was helpful, make sure to click the like button in your browser. Also, please help your friends to learn this topic faster by sharing this video with them. And if you would like to be the first one to know about new videos to help you reach your goals faster, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.